No. So this is the record in 85 that Prince did all the instrumentation to except for saxophone. He wanted, Wendy and Lisa had been totally hooking him up on some jazz shit and you know, kind of exposing him to it. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to make this jazz record, but he didn't want it to be under his name. Okay. So he came up with a fake band from a fake town and called it Madhouse. And he named all the tunes numbers, but it's all him, drums, bass, piano, guitar. That's on Paisley Park, wow. And he made up this this whole fake story about it, like there was this band, and back then there was no internet, so you couldn't really, but he made up a fake town right. that the band was from, and fake players that were in the group, but it was all him. All him. Wow. Yeah, that was the shit. Get that. What was this? What was this? That was 87. Fucking and he did, supposedly did all the sophomore. <laughs> right? <laughs> Dude. I was eighth grade. That is really dope. And he did this record in like a week. That's because he's Prince. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that motherfucker couldn't be touched. No, I couldn't. Let me see. What was some of the funk you remember listening to growing up here? Here? The meters. And the Isley Brothers, Word. and the Brothers Johnson. Stop! <laughs> All right, ain't we funkin' now? Something, no, they got get the funk out, out my face. face. Get, get that the funk. I love. That's all I grew up around that, funk. and stuff like Peaches and Herb, oh, and yeah. um, God, what all the band Al Jarreau. Oh yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of all the the Doobie Brothers. Michael McDonald, um, okay, no, dude, that guy. He's the only. He was the only artist that got props when he did that that Motown record. Did he? Right. He did all those covers, right? And everybody lost their mind because like he yeah. pulled it off. Like no white boy's supposed to do that. No, nah. he did it. And dude, it that bad. cover of Stevie Wonder's "Too High." Too high, yeah. too high. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, dude, that shit. So when I got, that, I play that. You know, I do the Motown yeah, Monday yeah. night. I play that. Motherfuckers go. Ah! They love it. It's the they shit. love him because I had this this thing because uh, another band, average white band. Oh hell okay, yeah! So all those fools are Scottish. No like, way. Not Scottish. I have this this theory that Scottish people have that swing. They have that feel. That that, that funk. That, that is that thing. That's uh. just because there's it's, that's people that did that. They got Scottish blood, so they can they can get away with that shit. Absolutely. I think that's amazing. Wow, I didn't know they were Scottish though. That's crazy. Yeah, that was that whole band was Scottish. Hey, what about this record? Parliament, wow. See, I, my mom didn't listen to him as much, so I kind of looked at them as kind of like, they were like the black sheep, but like my mom was very much into Earth, Wind & Fire, um, Rick James. She was into that, you know, what was at, you know, what we now call boogie funk for yeah. in the 80s. But this record, I would always go sneak and listen to at friends of mine that, you know, when their parents would have it and I'd go listen to it and it was hella spooky, but at the same time, it was like, yo, this just some other shit. It is because they were dropping crazy amounts of acid. Look at this fool. I'd be on a lot of acid too, looking like this. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Oh, I love all the Parliament stuff. All the stuff George Clinton did. All that just it was next level. They were from a different planet, definitely. Oh, absolutely. From the other stuff that was going on at the time. And just look at that's you know just the costumes, the and costumes, stuff. the whole everything. And then when you go to a apartment show, what is it like? Three hours of just one long song. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they do like it ends up found, sounding like that. For yeah, sure. I opened for George a couple years ago, and uh, and it was way, it was a three hour show. Right. But he played everything from like the Maggot Brain stuff. He played all he played Funkadelic and Parliament songs. He was, it's man, just he a killed. good. Good, good show. This was the shit that you snuck. Let's see. 
You would sneak it in your parents' record collection to listen to this shit. I don't know if they have it because it's really. Remember Blowfly? Blowfly, absolutely. I don't think you got any Blowfly records nowhere in the. God. Hey, Ron, do you have any Blowfly? In the funk section? Yeah. Hell yeah. In the bees, let's see. Basic Black. Oh my god, this is a new Jack Swing group that was on Motown. Oh, ho, ho. I ain't gonna lie, I played the fuck out of this record. Hell yeah. <laughs> now, for those that don't know, Jonathan and I grew up in the same town here in Bakersfield, in California. Bakersfield. And he DJed as well. Yes. And this was known as the only white boy that could really fuck it up. At that time, yes. At now, that time. Now like, there's, yeah, there's, there's plenty. Of, there's, there's tons plenty. Of but at that time, I was the only one. And he had his his uh, doubles on It Takes Two. Like, it was just, man, back, so then, back then, we had to, you know, and back then, I think there was a couple times we got together and practiced and jammed, and he was like, motherfucker was on it. Me and so, Chuck. Me and Chuck always go at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't see him. But. Oh, Rick James. Oh, Rick James presents Bobby Amp. That's when him and Prince were having that feud of like putting out groups. Yep. Rick put out Mary Jane Girls and Prince put out Apolloni and all the other things. Vanity so Six. And yeah. I mean Vanity Six. Yeah. And that was some good time. I miss those times in music, man. Those two would just go at it. Who is the most? Them was real rock stars, man. Hell yeah, Rick James, I mean, everything. The way that they got down, all the... They were the real deal. The real deal. When they went on stage, it was an experience. Yes. Oh, there it is. Boom. Blue Flies Freak Party. This is the original Two Live Crew. This is original. This is the dirty, what do you call it this time? It was just the, the obscene, dirty um, musician at the time. Everybody, their parents in the 70s had one of these records. All the kids would just bust in their dad when their parents would go away. They'd bust in, they'd grab one of these records and they'd listen to it. It was, I don't know these some of these. He would take, they would do parodies, like, like, like uh, um, what's his name? Yeah, he did parodies of like a lot of songs, but just did X-rated versions. X-rated versions of them. And you really, there was a side, I think there was an explicit side, which was the regular real deal, but then there was the other side that you could play that was a little more clean. It was more clean, but I mean, I like, when there was sitting off the dock, sitting on the dock of the bay, and he did shitting off the dock of the bay. <laughs> <laughs> a song called Spread Your Cheeks, um, Suck It. There's so many good ones. They were all old disco classics. Yep. It was on TKO, I believe. It might have been on TKO Records. <laughs> so good that time. I love that stuff. When Corn hit, you know, everything. This is it. When we were at the top of our game, I always had... Um, what's down on here? Which one are you looking What's on? I'm looking Never Gonna Give You Up. Mm. Anyway, so... We're doing Untouchables. I know we've hit it. I always had a dream I wanted to buy a Bentley. Remember my Bentley? Oh, uh, yeah. The red one? The red one. So, wow. When I went and picked it up, I paid cash for it. I picked it up. The first thing, I because it had this crazy Mac, Mac, Macintosh stereo in it, the first thing I played in that thing, I put the top down, and I played Barry White, Never Gonna Give You Up, Cruising Down Sunset. And that was like the moment I'm like, I fucking made it. That Fuck was my yeah. Barry White story. I love that. That song means so much to me. Have you ever run into like cats like in the funk in the funk world that have like come up to you and be like, oh, I listen to your shit? No. I wish. I'm trying to think. That one was Cam uh No. I didn't even meet Cameron when they did word up. Um I haven't met any of those cats. I'd like to, but Oh, you know who Verdeen. Take it back. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Verdeen is the shit. I love that man. And he, yes, I met him. That's cool. He, and he heard, he heard corn stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said he loved what I was doing. And I love that dude because he's, how old is Verdeen? Almost damn 80. Yeah. Yeah, he's and he there. still kills it. He's out there killing it. That's a badass bass player. I love the bass. That's yeah. my shit. I strive to be as uh, fluid as him and moving and he going moves around and he's playing. And he just does his shit. It's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. But you submit him. Mm. Now we come to hip hop. Hip hop. Now, aside from like funk being one of the things that we all, you know, that we grew up on here in this town, 
Right. Hip hop was super prevalent, as as was punk rock and metal. But hip hop seemed to be, as far as like DJing. DJ, that's all we did. That's all we did. There was just so many records that we had to get. We had to we had to get them to play. Oh shit, Ice T. Oh, With Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis on, I, yeah, that's a crazy. Oh, man, that's a crazy ass one. That's when these rappers were metal. You just got to see, he's like all in leather and spikes and shit. Yeah, they wanted to be rock stars more than that's all that they had to go on. Like Grandmaster Flash. Flash, that was the biggest ones. They had all that shit, but yep. And then these dudes changed the game. Oh, totally. This is what they brought the Adidas in, which I'm, I'm sure you're quite familiar with. I bit the fuck out of them. That's what they did. <laughs> of course. Run the Jewels. You listen to those guys? You listen to Run the I Jewels? I did. I did. Well, I mean, I haven't listened to. I stopped listening to modern music. I was just say I call it a while ago. I've been listening mostly like 30s and 40s shit on series. No shit. On, yeah. on a, like old, old stuff. It just has this vibe. It's just really dark. And, um, but I know there's good shit out there. I mean, you know, I like this little kid. Um, and he put a couple songs out. I like Little Toe. Little Toe? Yeah, he's from Florida. Is that okay. like, I listen to that kid. And um, what else have I listening to? Other stuff. All this shit the Pirate Place and, and Zeppi. Yeah, what are they into? Just all this new shit. Some of it I really think is amazing. Some of it I think is the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. But I guess that might be my age. I don't know. But some of from where we come from, I respect all of it. Some of it is really just ignorant shit. Yeah, right? <laughs> and a lot of just like just tones and grunts and just like just sometimes. Like nothing. No no content. No, I get it. I think I think that the kids just listen for the production value. They love the beat. They don't. They just ignore whatever right. the person's saying. But there's some new shit out that's really, really good that I just... They get in the car, they're all, Dad, Bluetooth. I'm like, all right. And all the way home, <laughs> my truck, listening to this shit. Hell yeah. You're a drab majesty? Mm-mm. Ah, oh, dude. See, we got to hang on more. Because I don't. Dude. It's all 80s sounding electro synth. Drab majesty. Hands down. Drab majesty. I don't have to put that on the, I'm going to get to get it. Hell yeah. I listen to vinyl now. I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna listen. You got the table at the, at the crib? You got the table at the crib? I got a little one. Cool. Yeah. And and you ready to see the big system? No. Or? It's got a little speaker and it gives it just that vibe. You just, I don't have a crazy system. It's just got a little teeny speaker and I listen to it like old school style. Fuck it, yeah. You just watch it spin. It's, you know, it's the whole, the whole ritual of it. Ritual of it. Oh, this is one of those. Oh, Mita Rosa. Yes, I was here. Eric and Nick put on a concert at the Armory in yes. Bakersfield. I was there when he did this. Oh, this, oh God. Welcome to my groove. Yeah. Y mañana otra cosa. Ain't got nobody. Black Sheep. And we did the cover of. Yeah, you guys did, what was that? Uh, um, woke up, I, didn't you yeah, up? Cover AK, it was broke up. <laughs> yes. I had a dream that was hard. <laughs> That's a good. You can give it this, or you, you can, can give it that. that. It's so good. Oh, Rodney O. Rodney O. Everlasting bass. I got to get that, too. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, man. Ain't hey, back back then. There was no song that bumped as hard as that. It's song. that song. That is the best 808 at the time. Your chance to rock. <laughs> Oh yeah. Damn. Everlasting bass. I didn't know that that came out on Egyptian Empire. Yeah. Wow. That was all, what was that called? Uh, electro hop? It was electro hop, yep. That's what it was That's called. That's what we called it, electro hop. Electro or techno hop sometimes. Techno hop. Techno hop as well. I love these jams. I'm more guy with a shit ton of records. <laughs> oh, coach. Oh, I'm gonna... Oh, <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yes. Roxanne Shante, have a nice day. That shit was hard. Remember when we had a Def Jam 84 here? She played. Oh, that's right. I couldn't go. I was, I was too young. I couldn't I go. I got, was in my first shootout. And I got grounded because someone went over the top of my dad's car and was shooting in the crowd. And the cops pulled us out. And my dad looked at me and goes, you're never going to a rap show again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
wow. But that show was LL Cool J, Roxanne Shante, Houdini, New Choice, Eric B. and Rakim. Yep. Oh, that was such a good show here. Fuck, I was too young to go to that, but I wanted so bad. That was an amazing show. I went to the, uh, what was it? There was the Expose and Lisa Lisa at the fairgrounds. Yeah. That was one. And then there was one that Fat Boys were supposed to play. Remember they rioted? And then they rioted because they, yeah, they bailed. They bailed. You remember the first style of rock you heard that was like... Life changing? That did it for me? Yeah, that did it. That you were like, holy shit. Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Hence I named my son Zeppelin. Yes. <laughs> right here. Zeppelin is right here. I see which... Robert Plant. Communication breakdown. It was the first one I came in with. It had a whole lot of love on it. First time I heard it was. I think it might be. Is this one? Three. Was it three? No. It may. Or it might be two, which is. Might, where is it? Uh, I think this is a whole lot of love. It a was, lot of love is two. Yeah. When I heard it, it wasn't. I been It's on two. My aunt had a twelve inch of it. Twelve inch, a whole lot of love. Yeah. It's, it was. I believe it was it's a twelve inch. It might have been forty five. I was a little kid. Um. But when I heard that, I was hooked. And then she introduced me to. Um. Uh. Physical graffiti. Which had cashmere on it. Woo! And then I was, that's like, when I heard that, I was like, okay, I want to do some rock and roll. It was that, and then uh, the musical Jesus Christ Superstar. Those two things kind of pushed me in that direction because I loved that stuff so much. It was. And the musical Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. Wow. That shit was really in the 70s, came out in 70, 70 or 71. And at the time, it was so blasphemous and all this shit going on. And Baker showed my mom and dad. Uh, we're in a local production of it and then my father and mother split up and my mom left my dad for Judas and he's been my stepfather to this day I got my dad got Judas by Ju you know Judas and wow it was a really cool fucking funny story but um lighthouse um those were the records that did it for me and then going into the 80s it would be all the, the new romantic stuff and by the way congrats on this new record Thank you. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, there's some really heavy shit on this record. It's a very heavy record. Um, yeah, it was, it was crazy to make, but I did it, and uh, I'm really proud of it. And the guys did it in Nashville, and I did everything here in Bakersfield. Yeah, this is difficult. I remember the last one before. I did like, the last one I did in bigger so I got to the point where I'm like, I'm not traveling. I don't mean to be a dick, but I got my kids and I don't really want to do that. Yeah. So the band would get together and, and uh, send me songs. And if I was into them, let's go. And he'd record them. And then Nick came down here and we just recorded in Lowdale. That's where I got my spot. So oh, it worked. It's a good, a good record. This motherfucker's turning. It yesterday turned 20 years old. No shit, 20? <laughs> oh yeah, 99. Yeah. Oh fuck. This fucker turned 20, when did it, I think it came out in, it did come October like 6th or something. And that was also around the time you guys were the first rock band to play at the Apollo. Yeah, we did. We did the, uh, going at the Apollo. And that night was amazing. Every hip -hop, New York hip hop artist showed up for that gig. Pub Daddy was there, Bus Ryan was there, Lil Kim was there, like tons of people. That's and I so was just good. sitting there just like, <laughs> it's my mouth open. He's just full of coming in and just. Oh, and that's when I opened the door. I got to do a song with Nas on this. Let me see. This record. Yeah. I did a song with Nas. Yep. Play me. And I got to just do things I never thought in my wildest dreams I get to do. How was it working with Nas? We did it on ISDN line. So back then. No shit. Yeah. So they ran an ISDN line in my house. We just did it, on, it's called Adobe Fax, so he was in New York, and I was in the Tarzana house, and we did it just there, over the wow. phone. He recorded, we recorded it, and it was just like in real time, and he did his thing, and it was amazing. Hey, by the way, wow. happy 33th anniversary to this gem right here. 33rd? 
No, wait, actually, sorry. This is wrong. Rain and blood, actually. It's rain and blood. Yeah, we can cut that out. <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> this is the shit you buy to piss your parents off. Oh, Venom? Yeah. Hell yeah. We drink the vomit of the priest, make love with the dying whore. We suck the blood of the beast and hold the key to death's door. I love it. <laughs> Venom's dumb. Fuck yeah. What else? Check for Tyler. Tyler the Creator. Mm -mm. It's got some dope shit, man. This record's really dope. Yeah, check that. That's a good one. Let's see. I haven't seen any metal shit that I really love. What's that, your favorite Sabbath record? I wasn't in the Sabbath. No way! I mean, I like Iron Man shit, but I'm trying to think. I know they're like they're the godfathers of heavy metal period, but I'm just being real. I never was into that shit. I didn't get into metal until I got into corn. You know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm still kind of a newbie in this of all this. I mean, I listened to some like Slayer I had back in the early 80s when I was in high school. Some of the people I was hanging out would listen to it, but that wasn't my thing. My thing was like when I was DJing, like hip hop and freestyle and new disco and high energy, high energy, all that stuff. That was what I really, really enjoyed. Crazy shit like they got today. Oh man, this is one of the first records that actually turned me on to metal as a kid in like fourth grade. I remember they told me if you put this on the wall and you had a candle underneath it and played it, that the devil's eyes would start spinning. And you remember all the, like the <laughs> urban legends about like Molly Crew and the Maiden and all this. Oh, this is so good. And they also try to say Kiss stood for knights in Satan's service mm -hmm. or kings in Satan's service. Oh yeah. I listened to, I got into this in the, when did this come out? In, 84? Yeah. 82. 82. But I mean, I listened to it back then. It wasn't... I liked one song. Uh, Number of the Beast. Number of the Beast. And Run to the Hills. Six! 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 The number of the Beast. I always loved their cover, man. Their cover art Eddie was... was the shit. Eddie's the shit. Do you remember when we did that uh, on tour? It was Corns. It was Slipknot, Corn, and Maiden. Mm -hmm. In Rotterdam, or I think so it was weird. In, yeah, yeah. In Europe, Europe always has the good. And they brought out Eddie when they did the whole like unleashing of the mascot. That shit was like a religious experience. It was. Eddie's the dude. Dude, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Always, doggy. Appreciate we'll you. Wait, but wait, wait, back. Thanks for coming all the way to Bakersfield. Hell yeah, for you. Any Bakersfield's got friend. culture, y'all. <laughs> definitely does. Still places it. The rock and there's not many places like this left. No man, I like it. I'm bringing my boys. So I gotta bring them so have them start digging. And it, and it really kind of teaches you how to really kind of form your own taste and and everything. I mean, I think I think the way that we dug through music as kids, you know, it allowed us to kind of navigate through all the through, bullshit. Definitely, it's like we really didn't have crazy video games and shit at that time either. Shit, to no, take you out of your head. Shit. No, you had to go arcade and that shit was expensive, but coming here and doing this kind of took you out of your head for a while.